What's happening ladies and gentlemen, this is Min for Architecture Inspirations. Today I'm gonna show you some exterior lighting tips and tricks in V-Ray for SketchUp. Let's get started. Number 1. Lighting using sunlight. When using the V-Ray sunlight, the lighting will be affected by the SketchUp shadow settings. To change it, you can go to the shadows tray and set a specific time and date for your scene. If you want to manually adjust the sunlight without relying on the SketchUp shadow settings, then you can turn on custom orientation, which will allow you to manually adjust the sun's horizontal and vertical rotations with these sliders here. Next is the color and intensity. Here you can change the hue of the sunlight to a specific color that you want. For example, if you want a purple or a pink tint for a sunset scene, then you can change to a purple color. But remember, don't make it too intense, otherwise it will look unrealistic. For normal daytime renders, I usually leave it as a white color. Next is the color mode. By default, it is set to filter. If you change it to override, this will override the sun color with the selected color, which in this case will make it whiter. Here's a comparison between the two modes. You can see a very subtle change, but the filter mode gives a warmer tone while the override mode gives a cooler tone. Next is intensity, which determines the power of the sunlight. You can use the slider to adjust the intensity or type in a specific value here. Or you can adjust the intensity over here as well. Next is the size multiplier. This will change the size of the sun, but what's more important is, the bigger the size of the sun, the softer the shadows. This is a great trick for controlling the shadow sharpness in your scene. Next is the sky model, which by default is set to Hosek. But if you want to do a sunrise or sunset render, then I suggest you change to the improved sky model. Here's a comparison between the two sky models. As you can see, the improved sky looks a lot more realistic during sunset. Number 2. Lighting using dome light Another way to light exterior scenes is to use dome light. To use a dome light, first we need to turn off the sunlight. Then on the lights toolbar, click on this icon and click on a spot in your model to add a dome light. You can now see that a dome light is added to the list. As you can see, a dome light is a light that surrounds your whole model with an image called High Dynamic Range Image or HDRI. This image is a panoramic image that also contains lighting information which helps eliminate the model. By default, various dome light already has an HDRI map, but you can replace it with a custom map. To get custom HDRI maps, you can go to free HDRI websites such as Polyhaven or HDRI Heaven. I will leave the links in the description box below as well. After you download your HDRI map, you can click on this button and load it in. As you can see, the rendering has been updated with a new HDRI, but it seems a little dark. To make it brighter, you can increase the intensity here. There we go, that's better. Before I go to the next step to change the orientation of the HDRI, I will go to this view and click here to lock the camera so now I can freely move around without changing the render view. Next, let's change the orientation of the HDRI. We need to enable Use Transform. When enabled, this will lock the HDRI texture to the dome light so that when you rotate the dome light, the HDRI texture will also rotate. Another setting that you should keep in mind is the shape option. If you've noticed, our HDR image has a ground, but it doesn't show up in the render. See how the bottom half of the HDR is not there? You can fix this by changing the shape from hemisphere to sphere like so. There we go, that's better. Now just apply these tips to add the dome light to your scene. Number 3. Lighting using light gen. On your V-Ray light toolbar, there's a button called light gen or light generator which is a V-Ray tool that automatically generates thumbnails of your SketchUp scene where each one presents a unique lighting scenario. After you launch it, you can choose either exterior or interior. And here you can set the altitude and azimuth variations. When you multiply these two values, you will get the number of variants. And finally, you can choose the thumbnail size. I will leave it at the default value. When you're ready, click here to start generating the thumbnails. It will take a while depending on the number of variants and the speed of your computer. After it's done, you can see the thumbnails with the different lighting scenarios. 
when you click on one of them, the lighting will change accordingly and you can see that it updates in the lighting tab. Just choose whichever you like most and you're ready to render. For exterior, you also have the option to use HDR for lighting. Here you can choose the number of unique styles, variations, seed value, and the thumbnail size. The HDR option is super powerful as you can see, because V-Ray automatically creates a lot of realistic skies option for your scene. As you can see, the light gen tool is a great way to quickly find the best lighting that fits your style without having to spend hours on test rendering. Also, there's an option to save the light gen variations, so you can load them again later, which can save a lot of time. Pretty cool, huh? Number 4. Camera Settings Now that you know the different lighting techniques that you can use, let's talk about using camera settings. Sometimes the render can still be too dark or too bright. If that's the case, then go to the Settings tab, down in the Camera Rollout, use this slider to adjust the exposure value. And if you're familiar with real-world camera settings, then you can go to the Advanced Settings here, to manually adjust the ISO, aperture, and shutter speed to change the brightness of the render. If you want to know more about these settings, then you can watch this video here. Alternatively, you can also let V-Ray adjust the camera exposure automatically by turning on this option here. However, for it to work, we need to stop the render and turn off the interactive mode. Now we can turn on the auto exposure option and do a test render. As you can see, V-Ray automatically adjusts the exposure for us. Also, after you have rendered with the auto exposure, you can click here to get the automatic values that we use. And if you click here, it will transfer the value to the exposure value here. Pretty cool, huh? This is extremely useful for new users. But for me, I personally like to use the advanced camera parameters here. Number 5. V-Ray Frame Buffer After your render is finished, you can use the V-Ray Frame Buffer to make some adjustments. For example, here you can see the lighting looks a little dark in these areas, but this area is a little too bright. To improve the lighting, I can double click here to open the right sidebar, and here are my VFB layers. Now I'll click here and add an exposure layer. Then I can adjust the exposure using the slider or manually typing in a value here. As you can see, the scene is brighter now, but the highlight burn area just gets worse. If I go to View, Color Clamping, and click here to turn on forest color clamping, it will show me the areas that are too bright. Now I can fix this by decreasing the highlight burn until I can't see the clamp colors anymore. To compare the before and after, we need to turn off the forest color clamping setting. There we go, that looks a little better, but the image has lost some contrast, so you can increase it here. However, you can see that the render still lost some sharpness and details, that's why we're going to take it to Photoshop and do some final adjustments. Number 6. Post-production in Photoshop In Photoshop, I will double-click the image to turn it into a normal layer, then I will right-click and convert this into a smart object. Next, go up here and apply a camera raw filter, then I can use this to make some final adjustments, such as tweaking the exposure, contrast, etc, and more importantly, I'll use these sliders to bring back some sharpness and details. Up here, I can adjust the temperature and the tint of the image as well. The reason why I turned this into a smart object earlier is because now I can easily go back and make more adjustments if I need. There are also other things that you can do in Photoshop to improve your render even more. If that's something you want to learn, then watch this video here. And those are some tips and tricks for exterior lighting in Vera for SketchUp. If you're looking for more tutorials on V-Ray, I would suggest you take a look at this class on Skillshare, who is also the sponsor of today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in creative skills like design, illustration, and many more. The premium membership will get you unlimited access so you can join any classes and communities that you like. But as part of this sponsorship, Skillshare has set up a one-month free trial for the first 1,000 people who join. So you can take all of the classes completely for free. If that's something you're interested in, then go to this link here. I will also leave a link to a few useful classes that I took. One of them is Learn SketchUp and V-Ray Beginner to Advanced by Tanish Patel. This is a comprehensive class with 4 parts that walks you step by step on how to build a house in SketchUp and then render with V-Ray. If you're looking for other V-Ray tutorials for another software, then there's a class called Create Photorealistic Exterior Renders with Studios Max and V-Ray by Jack Denham. There are also many classes and communities that you can explore. 
Again, the first 1000 people who use this link can join Skillshare today for free. Anyway, that's all for today guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, comment below and let me know if you have any questions. Stay inspired guys, and I'll see you next time.